As we said in our previous video on the New Guinea campaign, it tends to go a little under the radar. This is especially true for the second half of the campaign in which the Allies were no longer on the defensive and were ready to launch an offensive of their own. An offensive that would erode the Japanese 8th Area Army's foothold on New Guinea, Papua and Dutch New Guinea. Really, we can break the Allied offensive into two parts. Operation Cartwheel, which went from June 1943 to March 1944, and the Western New Guinea Campaign, which went from April 1944 to August 1945. While the Australians spearheaded the first half of the New Guinea Campaign, the US played a far more significant role in the second half, especially in Dutch or Western New Guinea. The principal objective of Operation Cartwheel was originally the capture of the major Japanese base at Rabaul on the island of New Britain, New Guinea. Directed by American General Douglas MacArthur, this would be achieved through 11 sub-operations and in concert with the nearby Solomon Islands campaign. In August 1943, however, the American Joint Chiefs of Staff met with the US President and Winston Churchill in Quebec and decided that the neutralization, instead of the capture of Rabaul, was a better plan. In short, the Allies would bomb Rabaul and seize the lands and islands to close it, but not actually invade Rabaul. About four months after the start of Operation Cartwheel, the US 5th Air Force, Royal Australian Air Force and Royal New Zealand Air Force started laying waste to Rabaul from the sky, taking off from the island of Bougainville and from naval air carriers. They continued laying waste to Rabaul through Operation Cartwheel, chipping away at Japanese resolve and material bit by bit. But the bombings were just one element of cartwheel, and a whole lot of land-based fighting still went down. We're not going to delve into every sub-operation, but we'll cover a few. Operation Chronicle is important because it was the first. Beginning on the 23rd of June 1943, the Americans and Australians invaded the islands of Woodlark and Kirawana almost unopposed. The Japanese conducted a few minor defensive air raids, wounding several men, but scoring no kills. On the 30th of June, the Allies initiated Operation Toenails, yuck, or the New Georgia Campaign. A largely American force of approximately 43,000 men waged war against some 10,000 Japanese on the New Georgia Islands of the Solomons. Munda Point on the island's west coast was a hotspot. The US 43rd Division fought tooth and nail to seize the Japanese airfield at Munda, and the Japanese responded in kind. In the advance on Munda Point alone, the 43rd suffered 90 men killed, 636 wounded, and a further 1,000 evacuated due to illness, mostly combat stress reaction or combat fatigue. In the subsequent Battle of Munda Point, after the 25th and 37th Divisions reinforced the 43rd to amass a force of some 30,000 men, the Japanese brought the American casualty count up to 5,000 in exchange for a little under 4,700 Japanese soldiers killed. American war historian Samuel Elliott Morrison described what it was like on the ground. The Japanese attacked with blood-curdling streams, crawled silently into American foxholes and stabbed or strangled them. Often, they cursed loudly in English, named the American commanding officers and dared the Americans to fight. For sick and hungry soldiers who had fought all day, this was terrifying. The Americans shot at everything in sight, even comrades. The Americans did take Munda Point though, and by the 7th of October, all of New Georgia. This was a crucial step toward another important Operation Cartwheel Suburb, codenamed Cherry Blossom. The goal of Cherry Blossom was to take the major island northwest of New Georgia, Bougainville. This was a massive campaign, incorporating some 174,000 Allied troops and between 45,000 and 65,000 Japanese troops, and lasting beyond the end of Cartwheel. From November 1943 to November 1944, the Americans landed on the Bougainville coast at the village of Torokina and toiled for a beachhead. From then until August 1945, the Australians sought out and destroyed the Japanese soldiers that remained on the island. 
Some 26,400 Japanese succumbed to tropical diseases and malnutrition throughout the campaign, and in the end, the Aussies were able to capture between 21,000 and 23,500 of the survivors. As we mentioned before, Bougainville's airfields were essential to the sustained Allied bombing of Rabaul. On the 15th of December 1943, the so-called Director Task Force, centered around the US 112th Cavalry Regiment, landed on the beaches in the swampy Arawa area of New Britain. This was on the other side of the island to Rabaul. On the 26th, the US 1st Marine Division also hit New Britain at the northwest headland named Cape Gloucester. These landings, and the battles that followed, fell under the umbrella operation codenamed Dexterity. While the strategic value of the Arawa landing remains a topic of debate, it diverted about a thousand Japanese soldiers from Cape Gloucester. In the end, the Allies managed to kill around 4,500 Japanese troops and chase the survivors out of western New Britain to Rabaul. Finally, the Allied landing on Emerau is important because it was the last of Cartwheel's 11 sub-operations. Like the very first sub-op, Operation Chronicle, Emerau was a breeze. 4,000 US Marines landed on the island, which sits in the sea to the north of New Britain, on the 20th of March 1944. They faced no opposition. The Japanese brought aerial reinforcements from Rabaul from the northward island of Truk in January 1944, but that ultimately just cost them more material. On the 19th of February 1944, between 70 and 120 Japanese planes withdrew from Rabaul. The Allied air raids continued, and Operation Cartwheel saw the Japanese forces at Rabaul isolated and, as intended, neutralized. They couldn't make offensives and couldn't be reinforced. Rabaul was pretty much a POW camp at this point. So that's New Guinea, Papua and some of the Solomons covered, but what about Dutch New Guinea or Western New Guinea? Like Cartwheel, this campaign was made up of lots of sub-operations. Some took place in Dutch New Guinea, some in Australian New Guinea, and some on the surrounding islands, including as far off as Morotai. The campaign kicked off with two simultaneous operations, Persecution and Reckless. In Persecution, a largely American force made an amphibious landing at Aitape, New Guinea, on the 22nd of April 1944. They brought some 22,500 men to bear, vastly outnumbering the thousand odd Japanese combat troops in the area. By the 4th of May, half of the Japanese defenders were dead. The purpose of the operation was to cut the Japanese 18th Army, positioned to the east of Wawak, off from Hollandia, which was the east of Aitape in Dutch New Guinea. Hollandia was the objective of the concurrent Operation Reckless. In this operation, the US 24th and 41st Infantry Divisions made landings at Tanamura Bay and Humboldt Bay, forcing the Japanese 2nd Army to withdraw westward along the coast. Only 1,000 of the 7,200 Japanese who survived the initial attack and tried to retreat, survived. The Americans mopped them up until the 6th of July 1944. On the 10th of July 1944, the Japanese 18th Army launched a counter-offensive to take Aitepe back. It started with a bombardment and then a 10,000 men strong Japanese attack across the nearby Drinumor River. The US 11th Corps made a fighting withdrawal through the jungle, inflicting heavy casualties on the Japanese. This continued over the next couple weeks and involved savage close-ranged and even hand-to-hand -hand combat. On the 29th, the 11th Corps launched a counter-offensive and pushed the Japanese back over the river. By the 4th of August, the Japanese were ordered to withdraw back from Awak, having lost between 8,000 to 10,000 of the troops they ultimately committed to the counter-offensive. Many of these casualties were attributed to disease and starvation. A few months later, the Australian 6th Division arrived at Aitepe to tag in for the Americans. The Australians were fresh and ready to rumble, while the Japanese had suffered defeat after defeat and lacked food, medicine and air and naval support. From November 1944 to August 1945, some 13,000 Australian troops worked their way to Awak essentially mopping up the 30 to 35,000 Japanese troops in the area. Between 7,000 and 9,000 Japanese troops fell to Australian fire, while 13,000 surrendered. Disease and starvation did most of the work though, claiming a further 14,000 lives. Wawak fell on the 11th of May, and the surviving Japanese withdrew into the mountains. By August, 
The Aussies ceased their pursuit because they knew Imperial Japan would soon surrender. The Aitapei Wawak campaign marked the end of the Western New Guinea campaign. With Rabaul neutralized, the Japanese forces in Dutch New Guinea crushed and the Japanese home islands nuked, the New Guinea campaign was over. And while some deem it arguably the most arduous campaign fought by any allied troops during World War II, the campaign still tends to go under the radar. We can only hope that we were able to shed some light on this bloody pocket of the war. But what do you think? Did you realize the New Guinea campaign was so extensive? Do you know of any great stories from the New Guinea campaign? Are you shocked at how many soldiers succumbed to disease and starvation? Please let us know all that and more in the comments section below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something new.